<clears throat> All right, Shalom Israel. This is the brother of Warba coming back to you again with another lesson. Uh, before I get started, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. I want to uh, give a shout out and honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Okay. Uh, peace and blessings to the hopeful and humble elect that's out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. Uh, hoping to wake up the hopeful elect that's out there. And um, to raise Israel, man, and to get us out of this place, man. So that our big brother, Yahweh can come back and deliver us all from this place, man. Okay. And shalom to you, sincere Akwath. You had uh, subscribed to my channel as well. Uh, peace and salutations to you. Okay. So, um, you know, the topic that I want to get into this morning is one that I've, I've, I've kind of touched on before. But it's one of my favorite things to talk about, man. And it's just... Being at peace and being happy with what you have, man. Being content with the things that you have and that the Most High has given you, <clears throat> you know. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we all have a want and we all have things that we desire and hope for and, you know, and strive and push for in this worldly place, you know. You know, you know, it's just a part of nature and it's a part of just being, you know, being a man or being a woman. You know, there's things that you desire, there's things that you want, there's things that you want to accomplish and goals and things like that. And I'm not saying that that's, you know, a bad thing. But at the end of the day, you know, the scripture says, seek ye the kingdom first and all these other things shall be added unto you. OK, so today what I do what I want to do is this. I'm going to get a couple of scriptures, a couple of precepts, man, you know, just to keep us in remembrance and remind you of the goal, the main, the primary objective. OK, and why it is important for you to be content with the things that you have all right so without further ado i'm going to get into it you know this is actually i don't want to have first timothy first i want to go into philippians um the fourth chapter and i'm going to start at 10 okay and um <clears throat> actually i'm going to start at nine okay so this is philippians 4 and verse 9 it says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the and the god of peace shall be with you okay so there's a lot of things that we learn when we come into this thing man you know when we learn that we are an israelite we learn the dietary laws we learn to keep the the laws statutes and the commandments okay so when you learn those and you receive them through the holy through the spirit you know spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai you know then you apply those things you know so it's kind of like you know, having knowledge, you get the knowledge of things, and then when you apply it, that's called wisdom. Okay? So the scripture says, you know, those things which you have both learned and received, heard, and seen in me to do those things. So, you know, you got to make sure that you practice those things. Practice what you preach. You feel me? Okay? And then the most hot <coughs> and then the power of peace shall be with you. You know, and a lot of us don't really understand you know, the idea of what peace truly feels like or what peace truly is, man. <clears throat> okay. You know, and not to digress from the topic too much, but I'm going to touch on it a little bit, man. There's nothing like having peace, whether it's peace of mind, tranquility, or quietness, man, to where you can actually reflect, remind, or, or reflect and, um, you know, actually meditate and build your spirit back to where you need to be man because there's a lot of there's a lot of demonic vibrations and spirits and things that you go through in your daily walk out here in this world man that continuously pull you down and make things a struggle okay so peace is a big big and much needed thing to have okay verse 10 <clears throat> but i rejoiced in the lord greatly that now that the last your care of me has flourished again Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Here's the point. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, or not that I speak in respect of want, Salakia, for I have learned in, in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. All right. And a lot of us, you know, us Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, man, we don't know how to be content. You know, we don't we, we we're too busy worrying about the things that we don't have, you know, and not worried about the things that we do have. OK, <clears throat> verse 12 says, for I know both how to be abased, how to be lowly. OK, 
And I know how to abound, how to be, you know, have more than what you need. Okay. Everywhere in all things, I'm instructed to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. All right. So, you know, that's the whole thing about it, man. You, you've seen both sides and that's actually called balance at the end of the day, you know, which is beautiful. All right. There's a precept in Proverbs that I really love <clears throat> that says, give me neither poverty nor riches, you know, but just give me food that's need for, that's fit for me. Loosely paraphrasing. OK, I believe that's Proverbs 30, the eighth chapter or Proverbs 30, the eighth verse. Excuse me. OK, but see, that's the thing. You know, we have to remember to just be content with the stuff that we do have here. All right. Because this place is not our rest, man. This is not the end for us. And this is not where we're supposed to stay. It's supposed to stay. We're not supposed to be super comfortable here in Babylon. Because we know that this place is going to be <coughs> utterly destroyed. And it's not going to last. <clears throat> okay? So always got to keep that in the forefront of your mind. And don't be worried about such things here in, the, you know, here in uh, America or wherever you may be. Wherever you may be scattered. You know? Don't worry about trying to... You know, be the top of the top of the best of the best and all those things, which that's OK at certain standpoints. But then, you know, you don't lose don't lose focus of the primary goal, man, which is to be delivered out of this place. OK, because the thing we got to remember is when having all of those those uh, wants and things like that, you know, you'll have some some big time issues that come along with that. OK. Let's get first uh, Timothy 6, and uh, I'll start with uh, 7. It says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Okay? <clears throat> and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. All right? So just having clothes on your back, man, and, and, and food to eat, that should be good enough for you. You know, Jake has to have... All the latest fashion, all the brand new things and all the, you know, the, the they got to be the keep up with the Joneses type, you know. And ultimately, you know, we, we strive. That's a part of our nature. We like to be kings. We like to be, you know, have all the finest of the finest. But that's not this is not the time to do that. <clears throat> OK, right now, this is so-called tax season and everybody's rushing out to go buy all the latest and the newest and things that they don't necessarily need. You know, which ends up putting you in a um, a trick bag, you know, mentally, spiritually, financially. You know, at the end of the day, that's how the, uh, you know, the heathen nations get up and rise up above us because we're the biggest consumer in this place, man. OK. Verse nine, but they that will be rich. So like you, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So if you're always thinking about money, you're always thinking about trying to get the bag or secure the bag, man. You you know, it says you fall into temptation and you fall into a snare. Well, what is a snare? All right. It's a it's a trap. <laughs> OK. I'm going to continue on. And it says and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's the thing that you see, man. Just, you know, all you got to do is just look around, man. You know, open your eyes a little bit. You pay attention spiritually, man. You open your spiritual eyes, you'll see all of these different things going on just within people around you. Okay? You'll see how many things that they're pierced with. And they'll be worried in their mindset. They'll be worried about, you know, all these different things money wise. And, and it's really not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? They'll be struggling or, or losing their mind over 1500 bucks, 500 bucks. You know, a tire may bust and their whole world is just upside down, you know, because they've been out there worried about the wrong things. They haven't been keeping their mind and they're keeping their eyes single and on the most high. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens. So I pray that this message has been edifying. This epistle has been edifying to you. And uh, the water for tuning in and checking me out. 
And so before I get out of here, again, I'm going to give all praise, glory, honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. And then until next time, this is your boy Bees. I'm out. Shalom.